Welcome back and thanks for stopping. It is a beautiful 32 degree day. Uh, the sun is shining, there's a little bit of a breeze, and I wanted to go over with you some of the things that we're planning on for this upcoming spring. I know it's only mid-February, but uh, there's some things that you gotta pre-plan for, you gotta think ahead about. Um, uh, for instance, the garden here. Uh, what type of things are we gonna plant? What kind of things do we want in our garden? Um, some of the seeds, they, they get back ordered or they get sold out. So the sooner you get uh, a plan, uh, the better it is for getting stuff ordered, uh, the more likelihood that you're gonna be getting something. And before we go too far into the garden, if you remember, uh, Red and Callie, they were uh, agitating the surface of the, of the garden. They were fertilizing the garden. However, Red and Callie are not here. Yep, Red and Callie are not here. Uh, their bed has not been slept in for probably about a week. Uh, yep, almost exactly a week. And uh, the reason for that is also part of spring planning. So we brought them over to my cousin's place uh, as he was borrowing a boar from somebody. And um, so we found Red and Callie a boyfriend. And the reason that's important for spring is uh, we don't have a barn uh, indoor facility to farrow out baby pigs. So we try and time it so that in the springtime, roughly May, uh, May or June, uh, those are kind of the times where the weather is nice. We've got green grass, uh, the temperature is mild. We don't have a lot of huge storms yet. Um, and so that's kind of the time we wanna have baby pigs around here, which it also allows us to uh, raise the pigs up until I'd say about January, somewhere in there, so that they're about the right size for, for butchering. So now, back to the garden. As you can see, Red and Cali, they've made a few nice piles here, uh, and there, and all around. And they've done a wonderful job of uh, tilling up some areas where it's not too deep. Other areas, I was a little bit disappointed. They went a little bit deeper than I expected. Um, Plus we've got some hay that they left laying around. That'll end up getting incorporated into the dirt, making a little bit of an organic matter type of substance in the, in the soil. So last year, I'll show you kind of what we had going with the garden. We had pumpkins up at the top corner. We had squash going across here. We also had corn coming across below the pumpkins. We had potatoes down here. We had tomatoes over here. We had zucchinis going around over there. Uh, and then on the other side of the fence there, kind of where that hoop house is, we had uh, ground cherries, we had cucumbers, we had peas, a uh, whole bunch of different things. What I did wrong last year, uh, I wanted to try planting a cover crop. And not that a cover crop is wrong, just the way that I did it was wrong. Uh, we planted it fairly thick with oats and buckwheat, and they came up great. However, uh, they came up a little bit late because it was a cold spring. And uh, they also, I couldn't kill them. Uh, I would walk over them with a, a board, step them down. I drove over back and forth with a tractor every, every uh, tire width and they wouldn't die. They just kept on coming up. And the reason for that is they never got to the milk stage, which is where they are forming the seed pod. Um, and they're going to, um, well, it's, it, it was too early when I was stepping them down. So if I try a cover crop again next year, or this year, on my garden, I think what I'm gonna do is I would plant something, let it grow, step it down, and then find a tarp, and put a tarp over it so that it limits the amount of sunlight that the, that the cover crop, like an oats, would be available to get. And if they don't get sunlight, they end up dying. So then you get a nice mat of oats, uh, laying. it's kind of like a straw, laying over the top of your garden, which is supposed to suppress weeds. It's supposed to help the, the biology in the soil and a lot of good benefits from a cover crop in the garden. I just did it wrong, so it didn't work out great for me. So this year, I'm hoping to have maybe even a two, possibly three gardens. We'll see how it goes. Um, one in the place that we had it uh, last year, and then another garden right by where the monsters were. They did their due diligence, they, they scratched up the surface, they fertilized, they did everything that I asked them to do. And my plan here is probably to take the squash and pumpkins that we had up there 
and plant them down here. Uh, zucchinis and yellow squash and stuff like that. I'm hoping to plant about 50 of them this year. And before you think I'm going nuts with planting 50 zucchini plants, uh, keep in mind pigs, uh, it's almost like candy to them when they eat zucchinis. They absolutely go crazy for them. They actually pass up their regular food so that they can eat zucchini. And last year we had 23 zucchini plants, so bear with me here. Uh, coming down along here, there's some asparagus in between those two. Coming along here we had a bunch, going out into the garden we had a bunch. And believe it or not, 23 zucchini plants couldn't keep up with our pigs. The next part of spring planting I want to show you is hanging birdhouses. My plan is to hang birdhouses way, way down over there and then out in the pasture. So they're going to be quite a ways away from our house. So you might be wondering, why would you, why would you hang birdhouses so far away from your house? Well, the answer is uh, for these three. Uh, there's birds, specifically like a tree swallow, that they, they eat thousands of flies. And if you've ever been around cows, when they poop, the flies love it for their larva and there's a whole bunch of baby flies. Well, if we can limit the amount of flies, limits the amount of larva, uh, and we don't have the problem with pink eye because we don't have such a big herd right now, but pink eye can become a, an issue. Yeah, we're putting up birdhouses for you. You wanna smell that? You, do you approve? Cedar? And while we're down here, being we're next to the cows, we gotta give them a little scratching. Come here, Ruby. Come here, Ruby girl. Come here, Ruby girl. Yep, Ruby's definitely one of my favorite. Hey, you. You say hi? You say hi? Good girl. Ooh, that's a good spot, huh? Yeah, Lucy, you never let me pet you, do you? Hmm? So with the birdhouse, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna screw the, the birdhouse to the tree. And I know you're not supposed to use metals when you're screwing them into trees. Uh, number one, this is a basswood. Uh, it's a little bit less desirable of a, a tree. Um, however, uh, I'm also using ceramic coated screws. And the benefit of that is they don't corrode, they don't rust. Um, so that I'm not too concerned about the, the metal getting into uh, the sap stream, uh, kind of like a bloodstream, um, of the tree. The other part of the birdhouse that I want to show you is uh, we've got ventilation up here. Uh, While well, this gap here serves for two purposes. One is for ventilation, and for two, when you open this up, it doesn't get wedged in there. So I'm able to open this up fairly easily, uh, clean out anything from the prior year, and then close this up, and then just a simple little wire staple. We just go over with that, and it locks it shut. If a bluebird doesn't want to use this bluebird house, uh, my target bird is actually a tree swallow, and tree swallows are better known for eating flies, which when the cows are pooping, producing the fly larva, uh, you get more flies. I'm hoping that uh, tree swallows are going to be uh, habitating my bluebird houses. Another thing is, what I wanna do is where this, the smooth part is on the screw, I'm actually gonna stop so that the screw head is out just a little bit, allowing the tree to grow so as the tree grows, uh, it's gonna actually be able to move the birdhouse out just a little bit. And I already pre-drilled the screw hole there, uh, just a little bit bigger than the size of the, of the screw. So the reason I chose this side of the tree is uh, it's on the north north side and I figured if the sun is out I didn't want the sun to be beating on the on the bluebird house granted we've got Underneath here we've got the corners that are cut out that allow air to go through We've also got holes drilled into the bottom. We have this open area here Which is allowing for ventilation as well as uh, being able to open it easy but I didn't want it to be sitting in the direct sun, cause making it like a sauna for the baby birds. 
If we were in Sweden, they'd probably enjoy having a sauna, but I haven't seen any Swedish bluebirds around here lately, so I think we're doing good. So again, I know we're quite a ways away from the house uh, where we might not be able to see a lot of these birds and my plan is to make a lot more of these bird houses and hang them uh, all over on the property. So we'll end up getting some closer to there. I just don't know the timing. I wanted to get these bluebirds, these bluebird houses up. Uh, so if I didn't remember in the next couple of months, the bluebirds are going to have a house uh, when they get up here in the spring. Um, and even better yet, if we have tree swallows that beat them up here, uh, that they're going to be able to have a house, make a nest, and eat a whole bunch of flies, keep them away from the cows. And that's all I've got for you. So I hope you have a great day. Goodbye for now, and thanks for stopping.